funding for NJ Spotlight News provided by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. And the Ocean Wind Project by Orsted and PSEG, committed to the creation of a new long-term sustainable clean energy future for New Jersey. From NJPBS, this is NJ Spotlight News with Brianna Venosi. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Brianna Venosi. We begin with sobering words from the CDC claiming, quote, the war has changed in the COVID-19 pandemic, with internal documents showing Delta infections are more contagious, likely to cause more severe disease, and spread as easily as chickenpox. The CDC is also releasing what's being called a pivotal discovery on the health crisis, data showing even vaccinated people can spread this more transmissible Delta strain, likely adding to the surge of infections we're seeing across the country. The study shows Delta produces similar amounts of virus in both vaccinated and unvaccinated people if they get infected, but experts say being fully vaccinated makes it less likely you'll get sick from the coronavirus. Well, Governor Murphy today said at least for now, he's not escalating his decision to strongly recommend rather than mandate an indoor mask requirement as the state reports 964 new cases and six additional deaths. The governor is planning to consider next steps over the weekend, though, reserving the right to change that recommendation and didn't entirely dismiss the idea of mandating vaccines. Just shy of 5.3 million people are fully immunized as of today. Health experts say this new information gives even more reason to get the shots because even with the Delta variant circulating, vaccinated people are far less likely to end up in the hospital. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan has the latest. You know, we took a victory lap and the race was not over yet. Public health experts expressed deep concern over data initially leaked from the CDC showing COVID's Delta strain is as highly contagious as chickenpox and spreads between even vaccinated folks, leading to far more breakthrough cases than previously reported. One projection, 35,000 infections per week among 162 million fully vaccinated Americans. Agency Director Rochelle Walensky briefed Congress privately yesterday that Delta can also cause more severe illness than prior COVID variants. Epidemiologist Stephanie Silvera called the leak an unforced error. I was disappointed that the memo had to be leaked and that it wasn't presented uh, because I think it's really important to be transparent. Um, there's already so much mistrust of science and the government and something like this certainly doesn't help. Public trust is wavering and I, I think that we have to be very cautious about the messages that we put out. In the data released publicly today, CDC scientists actually recommend universal masking is essential to reduce transmission of Delta, a big step beyond its Wednesday advisory that vaccinated people should mask up indoors. The agency drew data from a post-July 4th COVID outbreak in Provincetown, Massachusetts, where Delta spread to almost 470 residents, 74 percent of them vaccinated. Tests showed vaccinated folks carried measurably large amounts of Delta, virus levels comparable to infected unvaccinated people. Also, vaccinated people can infect or reinfect each other with Delta. Walensky did mention that Wednesday. With the Delta variant, we now see in our outbreak investigations that have been occurring over the last couple of weeks, in those outbreak investigations, we have been seeing that if you happen to have one of those those breakthrough infections that you can actually now pass it to somebody else. New Jersey's demonstrated a similar trend with Delta. An NJ Spotlight News analysis reported breakthrough cases caused fewer than 1% of new infections and deaths in the first six months of this year, but breakthroughs drove 17% of more than 3,300 COVID cases and 24% of deaths from June 29th through mid-July. The CDC's admitted the vaccines are not perfect. They work quite well in preventing transmission with alpha and what we're seeing now is they're working less well in preventing transmission with delta. That's a tough pill to swallow um, that vaccinated people can transmit um, and that is new um, but we still know that vaccinated people are um, 
much less likely to get severe symptoms of COVID. So it's still important to get the vaccine. We're still better off by getting the vaccine. And, and that is what we've really been trying to um, really share with all these communities that we're working in. Bob Atkins with New Jersey Health Initiatives will keep reaching out to at-risk communities with positive vaccine messages, but the CDC data also says vaccines may not remain as effective for nursing home residents and immunocompromised people, raising the possibility of booster shots for certain groups. The next step, CDC documents say, is to acknowledge the war has changed. It's a huge pivot in public messaging after announcing May 13th that vaccinated people could live mask free. We have done the best we can with outreach and with offering all sorts of incentives for people to get vaccinated. I think we're shifting into the part, point where we need to start mandating the vaccine and continuing to wear masks. Even with Delta's high transmissibility, the vaccines still protect well against hospitalization and death. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News. Healthcare unions are drawing the line when it comes to vaccine mandates, urging members to get vaccinated, but not making it a requirement. The president of HPAE, the state's largest labor union representing healthcare employees, tells NJ Spotlight News the vaccine is the most effective protection against getting COVID-19, as many workers were on the front lines during the pandemic and became sick. But U.S. labor law affords unions the right to bargain over a new work rule mandates included, and unions have to represent every member, those who do and don't wish to be vaccinated. It's a departure from policies being rolled out at some of the state's largest hospital and long-term care systems, St. Joseph's Health, Virtua, and Valley Health, along with Hackensack Meridian Health, RWJ Barnabas Health, an underwriter of NJ Spotlight News, and Care One are all requiring employees to get the vaccine or face termination. But local leaders in Hoboken aren't shying away from a vaccine requirement. The city appears to be the first in the state ordering workers to get vaccinated or undergo weekly COVID-19 testing, similar to the policy being rolled out for New York City employees. Workers will also be required to wear a mask while interacting with the public and in indoor settings. Those who don't comply will be fired, according to city officials. The mandate doesn't apply to teachers or other school district employees. Hoboken Mayor Robbie Bala says the new rule became necessary to keep the community safe from the increased spread of Delta. He's also urging local businesses to adopt similar requirements for their workers. Well, with the rise of the Delta variant, more and more school districts are hosting free pop-up vaccine clinics, hoping to boost the number of eligible students who are vaccinated before classes resume in person this fall. Data from the state health department show rates lag for the age group, and public health officials warn it's a critical defense as transmission rates surge, especially as the governor weighs whether to bring back a statewide mask mandate for students and teachers. Joanna Gagas has the story from Camden. Well, my mom had COVID a few weeks ago, and then so we decided to take the vaccine so it could be more safer since uh, like a new pandemic is uh, coming for, for kids. So we try to um, do as, as soon as possible. Ruben Vidal stopped by the Thomas H. Dudley Family School in Camden today to get a COVID vaccination for himself and his mom, who recently recovered from the virus that she described as Divisive. The Camden Public Schools partnered with a local health care provider, CamCare, to offer the shots to any eligible students and family members within the district and to anyone else who happened to wander in. Nancy Marrero said it was a relief to see her 12-year-old daughter, Janelle Bush, get the shot. It's great that she's going back to school, especially when, when she's vaccinated too. I mean, I, I, I don't have that worry about, about her getting sick and stuff like that. The vaccination rate is up to about 55 percent, which is fantastic. In the area that we're in right now, it's really important for the 12 and 17 year 12 to 17 year olds get vaccinated. We're approaching back to school. Um, it's it's just a it's our kids. It's the population that we really need to pay attention to. 55% vaccinated is progress in the city of Camden, but it's not enough to stop the spread of the extremely transmissible Delta variant that's impacting more and more young people. Just today, 50 new positive cases were reported across Camden County, the highest since May. 
All the more reason to vaccinate students, says Camden School Superintendent Katrina McCombs. One of the reasons that we decided to house this event and host it at a school is because we know that our schools are anchors for our community. Our, fa our families trust our schools, our families trust the staff members who are at our schools. And so when our nurses reach out and call parents and say, hey, we're having a vaccination event, it gives them the opportunity as family members to ask questions of a trusted um, professional. One of my teachers actually called, called uh, my mother uh, to come and get it. Uh, and I agreed. In a way, I was excited because I knew I was going to be healthier uh, and I was going to get a lesser chance from getting COVID. But even with an event like today's that saw more than 100 people vaccinated, kids age 11 and younger won't be eligible before the start of the school year, leaving districts unsure whether the governor will ever enforce a mask mandate in schools. The American Academy of Pediatrics. The Centers for Disease Control have come out and said that everyone in the school setting should be masked in the fall. Uh, we think that's the science. We would hope that the governor would really consider that, talk with his health advisors, and make a decision throughout the school districts. Otherwise, I think the start of our school year is going to be very, very controversial. The NJEA echoed that sentiment, saying in a statement, this is obviously a quickly developing situation, but if that is the CDC guidance in place when school starts, we believe schools should follow that guidance. It's a hotly contested issue that's even launched the Unmask Our Children campaign by parents across the state. The governor plans to wait before issuing any further guidance. But here in Camden, we don't have a formal policy, but our expectation and our recommendation and our guidance is that everyone who comes into our buildings must be masked. In the meantime, this site will be open again on August 24th to administer the second dose. And the district, together with CamCare, plan to have more pop-up sites like this throughout the rest of the summer in an effort to vaccinate as many kids as possible before the start of the school year. In Camden, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News. Well, how's free college tuition as an incentive to get a vaccine? Ryder University will offer three students who show proof of receiving at least one dose of the authorized vaccines free tuition for the fall 2021 and spring 2022 semesters. Now, that includes up to 15 undergraduate credits per semester, nine for graduates and 12 for students in continuing education courses. According to Ryder University, the cost for full-time tuition, which includes room and board, runs between roughly $17,000 and $23,000 a semester. The university says it'll randomly select and notify the three winning students from a pool of all eligible submissions on Thursday, August 5th. Time is running out to submit, though. August 1st is the deadline. A changing of the guard for state Democrats, Leroy Jones is officially the new chair of the New Jersey Democratic State Committee, taking the helm from former chairman John Curry and at a crucial time for the party. Jones is a former assemblyman and leads the powerful Essex County Democratic Committee. His top task? Helping Governor Murphy succeed at re-election amid an ongoing public health crisis that could threaten his chances. Jones spoke on the record with our chief political correspondent, Michael Aaron. State Democratic Chairman Leroy Jones, I saw you on television last weekend saying New Jersey is a blue state. And I thought how it was a purple state when I started out as a reporter 40 years ago. How did it go blue? It, uh, you know, it went blue because, uh, you know, the spirit of the people, uh, you know, in this great state, uh, you know, saw fit to know that, uh, you know, democratic policies and principles, you know, sustain their quality of life. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, why it went blue, along with, uh, you know, the, uh, the political apparatus of, uh, you know, a, a strong democratic party, uh, you know, just taking, uh, you know, elections one by one, block by block, municipality by municipality, county by county. And that gets you to state of New Jersey. Well, how do you make sure that it stays blue? It's hard work, Michael. Uh, you know, we have a uh, you know a candidate uh, in Phil Murphy and uh, his running mate Sheila Oliver that are second to none when it comes to uh, fighting on behalf of New Jerseyans. And uh, you know, a Democratic uh, you know party that is sharply focused on making sure that uh, you know that election happens, and also looking to continue to build on. Uh, you know, legislative, uh, you know, accomplishments and legislative successes in all of the 40 legislative districts across New Jersey. The one wild card in the Phil Murphy, Jack Cettarelli race could be 
if there is an outbreak of COVID-19 during this fall election season, do you recognize that as the one thing that could most likely derail your candidate? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, you know, Phil Murphy has been second to none on uh, COVID-19 response, you know, from the standpoint of testing, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, a robust vaccination, uh, you know, program. And, uh, you know, he's relied on the science, Michael. And, uh, you know, that's what separated him, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from Jack Chitterelli and so many others for that matter. Phil Murphy has been that, that one hero, that one leader, uh, you know, across this nation with no doubt and without equivocation has been the governor who has been the responder and the protector of people against COVID. I think that's true until a few months ago when the election started looming ever closer and closer. And instead of just following the science, I think Phil Murphy is following his political instincts a little bit as well. Would you acknowledge that? No, uh, I don't, you know, I don't think that's correct, Michael. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, the governor is, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get back to a state of normalcy here. Uh, you know, as I said, uh, you know, a 70% vaccination rate uh, you know, is, uh, you know, gets us to, you know, gets us nearer to herd immunity. Uh, you know, again, there are folks that, uh, you know, need to understand that, uh, you know, vaccines are the answer to fighting COVID. And, uh, you know, he's not, uh, you know, he's not lost, you know, that the intensity to continue to encourage people and, sh and show people that the science, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, the way to go and vaccines is how we continue to combat COVID and any, um, you know, any other variant of, uh, you know, this vicious uh, uh, virus. Jack Chatterelli is the Republican nominee. What's his vulnerability? Uh, you know, his vulnerability is he has no message. You know, he's struggling, you know, with trying to separate himself from a Trumpian culture. You know, his message, uh, you know, kind of bottoms out across this state. State Democratic Chairman Leroy Jones, thanks very much for being with us. Michael, it's always a pleasure. It's great to see you, my friend. The home buying bidding wars may be coming to an end or at least slowing down. Rhonda Schaffler has the latest and tonight's top business stories. Rhonda. Brianna, New Jersey's residential real estate market has been on fire for months, but some of that frenzied buying activity has cooled. That's according to New Jersey Realtors, which says after a record setting first half of the year, concerns over affordability and a lack of housing inventory has slowed the market. And J Realtors President Jeff Jones says some markets are calming down and a more stable, normal market is in the future. Now, in terms of affordability, while mortgage rates are still low, housing prices have exploded. The median sales price for homes in New Jersey this year is $385,000, a more than 20% increase over the same period in 2020. Meantime, the state's warehouse market is still booming Warehouse vacancy rates have fallen to record lows and rents have hit record highs in both Central and North Jersey, according to a new survey. And that's why we're seeing a surge in new warehouse construction. You can dig deeper into this story on njspotlightnews.org. Members of the Problem Solvers Caucus held a news conference in Washington today to try to convince their colleagues to support that new bipartisan trillion dollar infrastructure package. New Jersey Congressman Tom Alanowski was among those lobbying for its passage. It fixes what we have, including for those of us from the Northeast, our all important Hudson River railway tunnel, and it moves us forward. If, if you believe as I do, that America has to move from fossil fuels to clean energy, you should support this bill. The legislation cleared another hurdle today in the U.S. Senate, which advanced the bill on a procedural vote. The Delta variant is giving some big tech companies pause over whether to call their employees back to the office. This week, Google announced it would delay a return to its offices in October and said all workers must be vaccinated. Shortly afterwards, Facebook said it too would require vaccines the research firm Gartner says other major tech companies may follow suit when it comes to vaccines, but at this point, according to surveys it's conducted, less than 10% of employers have said they intend to require vaccinations for all of their employees. Now here's a look at how Wall Street wrapped up this trading week. I'm Rhonda Schaffler, and those are your top business stories.
better care for new babies and moms. A law signed yesterday by Governor Phil Murphy guarantees all new parents a free home visit by a registered nurse within the first two weeks of their child's birth or after adoption, a time maternal care workers say is critical for the physical and mental health of newborns and parents. Janine Donaldson reports. Thank God I'm here, I'm alive, but I mean, I think it was because of the visitation. The New Jersey maternal mortality rate is twice the national average, and a new law signed by Governor Murphy yesterday is aimed at reducing that by increasing access to postpartum care. Statistics show that a third to 40% of women do not uh, make their postpartum visit. And so I think what this bill represents is an opportunity for us to bring care to those women. 40% of maternal deaths take place within six weeks of delivery. The new law requires a registered nurse to do up to three home visits for birth, adoptive, and resource parents beginning the first two weeks after a child is born. There's a value to having a registered nurse um, because you want somebody who can pick up on those subtle signs and symptoms. You want somebody clinical. In New Jersey, a black mother is seven times more likely than a white mother to die from maternity related complications. And a black baby is more than three times more likely than a white baby to die before their first birthday. Dr. Domily Campo Operaji says she's concerned about the women who declined the voluntary program based on cultural experiences. Patients that look like me and you are not always certain what the ulterior motive is behind people coming to their house. We have been over policed. We have been over observed. Uh, we have been over screened. And so when that happens, sometimes um, our reaction to that is, no, I'm fine. I don't need it. Senator Teresa Ruiz sponsored the bill based on her own experience as a mom, not knowing if breastfeeding was successful until a lactation specialist came to her home. I never realized that in the space when I was drafting this bill, all of the different levels that it would help, that it would save lives. Assemblywoman Shanique Spey, also a primary bill sponsor, says this bill hits home. After she gave birth, she suffered from postpartum issues, and her husband's mother died a week after he was born. She believes if this program existed back then, the outcomes may have been different for her family. I'm a maternal health advocate all day, and I know the people in our community, and, now, and all communities need this because we, we, as mothers, as families, we go through our struggles on a daily basis and we don't know how to ask for help at times. Emily Baggett, Senior Director of Policy and Strategy for Trenton Health Team, says the program is intended to be a link for other services. She compared the program to one set to roll out in Mercer County. The nurses are going to look at the whole household. You know, are there any resources needed for an older child um, who's an older sibling of the newborn or a grandparent who might be in the household? So it is intended to look holistically at the family's needs and be an avenue to direct them into longer term services and supports. Under the law, $2.75 million will be appropriated to the DCF to implement this program. I'm Janine Donaldson for NJ Spotlight News. Support for the medical report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. And as we head into the weekend, plenty of cleanup remains in parts of the state after dangerous thunderstorms ripped through the area last night and at least three tornadoes briefly touched down in Essex and Ocean counties, with more confirmations expected as the surveys continue, according to the National Weather Service. One was in Verona, Essex County, where winds reached 65 miles per hour and knocked down several trees and large limbs, destroying at least one home. In Long Beach Island, at least 35 homes were damaged and three people were injured. The tornadoes were only there briefly, but it was plenty of time to do damage. You can see the cloud forming in this footage captured by a resident in Edison. In total, there were 12 tornado warnings across the state last night, covering Mercer, Monmouth, Ocean, Burlington, Essex, and Hunterdon counties. Fortunately, though, the forecasts look much sunnier as we head into this last weekend of July. 
That does it for us this week, but you can catch up on all the big stories. Watch Reporters Roundtable with David Cruz Saturday at 6 p.m. and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on NJPBS, along with the season finale of Chatbox featuring a one-on-one -on -one with Governor Phil Murphy. That's Saturday at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. I'm Brianna Venosi. For the entire news team, thanks for being with us. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association, and by the PSEG Foundation. The Ocean Wind Project by Orsted and PSEG will provide renewable offshore wind energy jobs, educational, supply chain, and economic opportunities for the Garden State. Ocean Wind, committed to the creation of a new, long-term, sustainable, clean energy future for New Jersey. In uncertain times, you need someone who has your back. That's why at Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, we make sure our health plans have all the benefits you need. More ways to get care virtually, more support for your mental health too. More tools on your phone. All in a range of health plans so you and your family can find just what you need. And we can help because everyone should feel like someone has their back, not just in uncertain times, all the time.